Hi, this is RGK. Two years ago, I uploaded a video on my favorite multiplayer games on a single screen, aka party games. In the span of these two years, more than 270 games in that genre have been released on Steam. I keep track of all the new releases and played a large number of them. Certainly not all of them, as my friends and I do not have infinite hours at our disposal to play the entirety of Steam's catalog. But I wish. Some titles are still the best, even after two years, but there have been many new challengers, and quite a few of these newcomers managed to make it to the top, so hopefully I can help you discover these titles. Before we get into the actual list, just like last time, we need to get a few things straight. This is my top picks, so it represents my personal taste as well as the taste of my friends. It's always difficult to satisfy everyone, we are all different people, we all have different experiences and tastes. Something else that I need to make clear is that this video is not about technical fighting games such as Street Fighter, it is not about traditional cooperative adventures such as the lovely Trine series, nor is it about hot seat games such as the Funny Worms series. I am talking exclusively about party games, the sort that you can launch every once in a while for quick sessions of fun and laughter. These games are for 4 people who hold one controller each, and ideally even casual players or complete non-gamers should be able to enjoy the moment. For those who are too shy to meet in person, or those who live in a remote corner of the planet Mars, there will be a marker to indicate which games can be played online. Ok, now that all the legalese is out of the way, I can finally show you all the bestest games that I handpicked for you. Instead of a countdown, I will organize them into specific categories relative to their niche, so each time it's a group of similar games presented together. You can find the link for each one of them in the description below the video. Let's start with the popular category of fighting games viewed from the side, worthy descendants of Super Smash Bros and Towerfall. The game is still sitting on top, quacking obscenities to whoever thinks of leaving its favorite cult. It's not the easiest game to control, but there are so many insane weapons and twisted levels that hilarious situations occur very frequently. Quack quack. Samurai Gun feels extraordinarily swift and elegant, a beautiful ballet of fast-paced action. Each player has a katana and a pistol with three bullets, and the levels are very well made and interesting. It's one of my personal favorites. Samurai Gun is equally intense and gratifying, don't miss it. Stick Fight the Game is a similar experience to Duck Game, as in being a festival of weapons and crazy levels. The unpredictable physics, procedural animations and many dangerous hazards contribute to the general madness. Every time that we launched this game, we had a great time. Brawlhalla is a free-to-play with a large player base on PC. It's the most successful equivalent to Super Smash Bros that is not bound to a Nintendo console. Brawlhalla is immediately fun for casual players, but it still manages to be hard to master, offering a lot of complicated moves to veterans. I like that it's based around items to pick up, it adds a small window of randomness and variety to the encounters. Although the base characters are certainly an acquired taste, there have been many guest stars from other franchises, such as Rayman or Adventure Time. Oh, here is a cool game. Basically, you need to pick up a crate and then propel it straight to your friend's face with great prejudice. Extremely satisfying. If you like doing these sort of things in your garage or in your garden, you can actually also do it in a game called Gravity and practice this cool move under safe conditions. It's like Half-Life 2's Gravity Gun from a side perspective. Pretty intense as you have to quickly scramble to grab a projectile while dodging whatever the enemy is throwing at you. Tread Nuts lets you inhabit the cockpit of a tank, but not those boy tanks from the 21st century. Tread Nuts tank jump and bounce all over the place as you try to manage the trajectory of your missile. If you add power-ups to the mix, it's a lot of fun. We just didn't like the later levels, it's so easy to fall off the levels that the winner was always the person who chose not to move. Meh. Then we stuck to the earlier levels. Dynasty Feud is quite a handful. Each player picks a family, and then the different families battle it out until there is only one left standing. Each family is composed of several fighters with completely different capabilities. One moment you are a ranged attacker, then you die and you respawn as a melee combatant. Between the different abilities and the levels filled with dangers, I would suggest this title more for veteran players rather than a casual audience. The keyword in Jump Gunners is Recoil. 
The weapons pack so much punch that they are more likely to send you flying than anything else. And since it's one hit, one kill, the result is very hectic and chaotic. You wouldn't spend a whole evening on it, but in short bursts it can be quite fun. Dad Beats Dad is a model parenting simulation in which well-meaning dads kidnap their rival's offspring and throw the kids in interdimensional portals. I guess that exposing them to the harshness of life and cosmic threats is an attempt to prepare the children for the existential horror of Twitter. While we weren't convinced by this game mode, we loved Diaper Sniper, in which the only weapon is a brick inside a diaper, and the level starts with only one of those. This simple premise turns out to be very dynamic and tactical. Now let's move on to another category that is still about killing your friends, but this time from all possible angles, 3D deathmatches. 3-2-1 grenades brings me back to GoldenEye on the Nintendo 64. While it's obviously not the same, a lot less violent and a lot more colorful, I enjoy the variety of arenas and game modes. Sometimes it's about destroying the level under your friend's feet, sometimes it's about painting the arena, but most often it's simply about throwing a nice curve bomb directly into someone's face. Nova Nukers looks amazing with its spherical planets, and the fights are also quite original as it's necessary to stun someone before getting close to finish them off. Except that many things can go wrong before you get to this point, like someone else rudely interrupting, and the hunter becomes a prey. We still need to cover another category of games centered around killing your friends, but this time from a top-down perspective. World Wars is still as incredible as ever, tasking wizards to play a nightmarish version of Quidditch without any concerns for safety. While the goody two-shoes wizards of Harry Potter try to score balls, in World Wars the only purpose of the ball is to kill. Transforming opponents into chickens to prevent them from defending themselves is totally fair game. Parkour Pine isn't as showy, but it's still very entertaining as deadly spikes bounce all over the place. It's fast-paced, but it requires a good deal of anticipation to get the trajectories, or you can do like us and constantly shoot your own self. We screamed and laughed a lot with this one. Head Snatchers probably think that simply killing someone with a projectile is too easy, and that a more efficient way would be to decapitate them first, and then throw the head into a goal to score points. This game was surprisingly ripe for opportunistic tactical decisions and mind games. Avocado is basically like Stick Fight the game, but from a top-down perspective and with two independent hands like in Gang Beasts. Sometimes you'll be laughing at your own failure, sometimes you'll be in awe after performing a very cool move that clearly wasn't intended. While Avocado shows great promise, it's still in early access and many users reported the game crashing. Night Squad features knights across a ton of game modes, ranging from cups and prisoners to capture the flag. Surprisingly, with the power-ups and announcer ramping up the violence, it feels like a top-down Unreal Tournament more than anything else. Arena Gods has been left to rot in early access, but its gladiatorial combats are still pretty entertaining. Especially when someone throws a spear that loops out of the screen and goes back to the sender. Whoops! Cutthroat Gunbot is not very easy to handle as you must take the wind into account, which makes pulling off a crazy stunt all the more impressive. There are many ships to choose from, different maps, and different power-ups, like a mounted flamethrower. Not the most accessible of the titles on this list, but pretty good nonetheless. Let's move on to a category of slower paced games in which the players don't necessarily know who they are, infiltrated among dozens of NPCs. The aim of these hide and seek games is first and foremost to figure out who you are, then accomplish a bunch of objectives while trying to guess who the other humans are. Sometimes you must also eliminate them. Hidden in plain sight is still an attractive concept after all these years. Among all the game modes, the most famous one is the race, in which every player races for the right side of the screen while having only one single bullet to stop the competitors. The prison adds its own spin to the race and also introduces many original game modes such as Gang Wars in which you should hide your nefarious activities from NPCs belonging to the other players. I find this game more easily replayable than the previous one. While we will tackle cooperative titles later, there is a rare in-between, 
games that task players to either work together or against each other depending on the situation, striking a balance between cooperation and competition. Aqualandras is a treasure hunt. The objective is to retrieve gold from sunken ships in the depth while fighting the monsters that lurk below. There are big tentacle bosses, but also power-ups to deal with them. Or to annoy your friends, as it's completely fair game to hit them and steal the loot. There is a lot of room for friendly backstabbing. Dive into another kind of hell with Crawl, a game in which the monsters are the players. Except for one, who plays as a human knight who can level up until he has a chance at clearing the dungeons. Whoever kills the human becomes a human, forcing the monsters to work together against their friend. Then we have the cooperative crisis management games, perfect to force a group of people to scream at each other until they manage to organize a group in a functional manner. On the other way around, they devise an action plan and then it all goes to hell. Overcooked 2 is simply one of the best if not the best party game ever made. This simplistic way of cooking is fun for everyone, even for those who tend to prefer fighting games. Each kitchen is different with all sorts of recipes and catastrophes waiting to happen. Make sure that you keep the fire extinguisher nearby. Diner Bros also has a few game modes similar to Overcooked, but its main course is a permanent restaurant that you gradually upgrade. What's more, you can directly serve your customers. When you see a jogger with absolutely no patience entering your establishment and you realize that you don't have a salad ready and then the food critic shows up, you know it's the right time to panic. If you play in single player, you can hire a waiter bot, but this game is better suited for human couples. Catastronaut brings a recipe to space as you attempt to crew a spaceship under heavy fire. Each level comes with its own challenges, forcing the players to adapt to dangerous situations. At some point, it's possible to open the airlock and it's actually rather useful. No oxygen, no fire. A small inconvenience might be that some players get unfortunately sucked out into the vacuum of space, and I swear that it wasn't intentional. Sorry I did it again, but it still wasn't intentional. My finger just keeps hitting the button, honest mistake. Okay, once we reached this point, it was hard to keep playing, we were laughing too much. We have another parenting game with Think of the Children, except that this time the kids have already been on Twitter and now they are trying to off themselves. That, or they simply like to pet crocodiles. The players are the parents, trying to complete specific objectives, such as preparing food or using sunscreen, but in the end, the most that they can do is constantly run all over the place to protect the kids. Ironically, losing one is a great way to laugh. Just make sure that you are a full party when you play this one, some levels are quite difficult. Mini games like Mario Party are an obvious choice for a great evening, but surprisingly very few games manage to be as entertaining as Nintendo's famous series. If you don't mind a little blood and violence, Pummel Party is most excellent and it clearly stands out as the best of this category on PC. The board game component is already fun with cool animations, but the game mostly shines in its large quantity of terrific minigames, all interesting and of great quality. You can find yourself digging for treasure in sand or shooting your friends with a shotgun inside a barn. Then we have Emergency Water Landing. There is only one minigame with three maps, but it's a blast. A plane crashed into the ocean, you must save the passengers. And I mean you, not your friends. Don't hesitate to ram into the boat. It doesn't matter if a few passengers might die to the sharks as long as you get more points. You can still hear them scream, brutal and hilarious. Marooners requires you to think fast as the game switches from one minigame to the next in the blink of an eye and then goes back to give you another round. Party Panic is already fun in its lobby screen as you can kick and punch the furniture or your friends while they choose a stupid hat. Not all the minigames are great, a few of them are a bit boring, but there is plenty enough for a fun evening. Alien League is not in 3D like the others, but there is a huge variety of minigames as well as a board game component. Getting points gives you the possibility to boost your stats right before a final showdown, determining the overall winner. Too many of the minigames are made of the same ilk, so the game leans more towards solid and consistent rather than crazy and hilarious. Wizard's Tourney has a lot of mini-games that we didn't like at all, but since it's possible to choose which to play, we spent a lot of time in the cemetery playing tag with a pumpkin. Absolutely perfect for a Halloween theme party. If you're into pain, or if you enjoy seeing others suffer, then there is a very prolific category for you, Sadistic Obstacle Courses. 
Usually it's about going from point A to point B, while there are various sharp rotating objects covering the ground between A and B. Fun fun fun. Just make sure that you play with people who are resilient to frustration and won't throw their controller onto your screen in a fit of rage. Bloody Trapland is an instant carnage and there is very quickly blood all over the place. It's an old game with a simple concept but 100% effective. Ultimate Chicken Horse mixes Bloody Trapland and Mario Maker. At the start of each round, the players add a bunch of traps and platforms from a pool of interesting choices. Be careful not to create an impossible level or you won't score points yourself. But if you're already well ahead, well, make sure that no one survives. Party Panic is here again because it has a game mode that we enjoyed even more than the mini games, the Gauntlet. A few prefabricated obstacles are randomly assembled into a level and then you try to get past various configurations of axes and spikes. There are no bots for this game mode, so make sure that your friends are around when you want to push someone into the water. We'll come back to Nippon Marathon's main game mode later, but for now, I will simply talk about its lobster mode, a randomly generated obstacle course. It's just like the Japanese TV show Takeshi's Castle, the obstacles are silly, but it's actually hard to make progress. There are also no bots in this specific game mode, and since everyone takes their turn, you can all play with one single controller. Ben and Ed Blood Party has a similar TV show vibe, except that you play as zombies trying to run past guillotines. Sometimes you don't quite manage to get past and you might leave some body parts behind, but don't worry, you can still go on, that's the perks of being the undead. Epic Loon is quite different from the others in that you can't run across the levels, all you can do is fling yourself. Where this game really shines is in its gorgeous levels inspired by movies such as Jurassic Park, Alien, Dracula and finally Godzilla that we didn't enjoy as much as the others. With its environmental storytelling and horrific atmosphere, it truly feels like a movie night with friends. While there are many racing games, for a party, it's better if the cars come equipped with machine guns. Thankfully, that's exactly what Toybox Turbo provides. The game gives us the opportunity to play as toy cars racing in familiar environments made a little bit more dangerous and there are also a bunch of weapons as temporary power-ups. It's pretty intense and there is a lot of variety, you can't go wrong with this one. Here is Nippon Marathon a second time, now with 4 players at the same time, or bots if you prefer. This game is completely bonkers. As a narrator comments in broken English, you can throw watermelons at your opponents while avoiding a pack of Shiba Inu dogs, and then suddenly a monkey taking a selfie appears on the screen. It looks intentionally awful, and the physics are clearly not true to life, but we had a lot of fun playing this one. If this game doesn't manage to spread happiness to your party, I don't know what can. Super Indie Kart is a PC equivalent to Mario Kart. It's still in development and thus not yet polished, but it's already shaping up to become a great racing party game. What's more, as the title suggests, there are many levels and pilots borrowed from various indie games, which adds a lot of character to the tracks. Godpunks is about racing to the top of the hill, but then you also have to keep your position long enough to score a win. Shields, hammers and missiles, all is fair in war and both. At first a bit strange to control, it quickly turns into a smart game about anticipating your opponent's every move. If you are a group of platforming veterans, speedrunners can keep you hooked. You really need fast reflexes and a lot of dexterity. However, if you want to enjoy the thrill of the chase but you'd like to keep it simple and more casual, then Muddle Dash is better for your needs. There already exist a lot of classical sports games, but we are here to see something a little crazier. My top pick is Laser League, in which each team attempts to turn on big lasers that move around the screen and cut down the opponent. Good map control is essential, as well as various power-ups and the capacities granted by each class. Elegant both in terms of visuals and gameplay, Laser League is great. Rocket League is already quite famous, all I need to say is that teams of rocket-powered cars attempt to score a huge ball. Save Your Nuts is also about scoring a ball, but this time it's a small one and you play as animals rather than cars. There is an additional game mode with 5 balls on the field at the same time, and even if someone scored a ball, you can still steal it again. It's chaotic, but you can still have some control over the action, and there are a few power-ups to help you get the edge that you need. There is also a deathmatch mode, and for this one, we like to play the level that has 2 power chips. They have lots of cannons. 
Push Me Pull You is gross, but also very unique and interesting to play as groups of two players fuse into a disgusting centipede thing creature wrapping around the ball. Yuck, I'm not touching that, you can keep the ball, thank you very much. Just like genital adjusting, you won't be able to play this game with everyone. This video is not over yet, we still have one last category to cover, games designed specifically to be played by two players. That doesn't mean that you can't bring them to a crowded party, sometimes they are simply entertaining to watch, you can organize a tournament and the crowd can cheer for the competitors. Eggnog Plus has been my favorite dueling game for many years for one simple reason, the sound bouncing around and returning back to the sender never gets old. We often find ourselves laughing to tears not long after launching this game. Eggnog was inspired by Nidhogg, and Nidhogg 2 is also one of my recommendations for 1 vs 1. So basically only the last player to kill the other is allowed to progress towards the goal. It's possible to move the sword up and down for a parry or an attack, and there are a lot of mind games or crazy moments when someone turns the situation around. Nidhogg 2 brings new weapons to the mix and some really nice levels. Dead Drop is another hide and seek game, except that it's exclusively for two players. One is a spy, the other is a sniper, and it gets pretty intense and interesting as both start to understand how to play. Uni is a huge collection of all sorts of mini games, and most of them are ranging from okay to good. The variety makes it feel almost like a warrior sort of game, but you usually have enough time to figure out what's going on. Foil is another fencing game, but this time the level only takes up a single screen and it's very fast paced, with big jumps. You will enjoy diving onto your unsuspecting opponent and smashing them out of existence. You can only score a point if you manage to reach your portal after a kill. One strike is once again one hit, one kill, with different sorts of Japanese fighters armed with blades. Each character has its own playstyle, both in attacks and parry, and figuring out their strengths and weaknesses is part of the charm. That's it, we're done. It was a long list, and yet there are still many cool titles that have been left on the cutting floor. If your favorite party game was not in the video, it doesn't mean that I think that it's a bad game, it's just that its playstyle didn't stick with me, nor the people I play with, or that there were too many other games in that category and I had to make the tough decisions of removing a ton of worthy contenders, including many other games that I personally enjoyed. If you want to direct other people to a title that you absolutely need to share with the rest of the world, please do not hesitate to write the name of the game and your feedback in the comments. My thanks to Jim, Alex, Nico, Keith, Yael, Philip, Audrey, Ripwich, Jack and Dad with whom I played a lot and also thanks to the others that I occasionally played with. Also thanks to my French colleagues at Pepit and Nuggets, Quentin and Jeremy. Now I'm once again about to move to another country and there is a tough year ahead of me so you probably won't hear much from me in the near future, especially in terms of video reviews. It's like a big break or a semi-retirement and then who knows what your future holds. Thank you so much for watching this video and thanks to all of my followers. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Bye!